Greetings, beloved St. Paul's community. Blessings to you on this Easter week. Know that you are in my prayers and I give such great thanks for each of you in this community that God gives us at St. Paul's. I wanted to accompany this email alert with a video for me just to acknowledge that this time we're in, uh, in the pandemic, it requires more than flipping a switch or changing from one day to the next um, without some acknowledgement of the complexity of the time that we're in. And as many of us have uh, talked about recently, the early days of the pandemic in many respects were uh, easier in a way because the guidelines were clearer and there were lots of things we couldn't do. Uh, and that was clear, there was no gray area this time we're in requires a lot more negotiating and navigating and assessing and figuring out how we each feel about assessing our risk and our safety and our comfort as we move in the world and all the things we have to take into account uh, regarding our own health, uh, the health of those uh, who we love and maybe live with. Um, there's so much uh, that we are all carrying in this time. So I thought it would be good to just offer a moment of pause and reflection to acknowledge where we have been these last two years, the losses we have endured, uh, the changes that have been made both in our community, in our families and loved ones, in communities of color who were hit particularly hard uh, in this time and unequally uh, by this pandemic. And all the things that we've learned and ways that we've grown and new things that have arisen because of this time. And I pray we will continue to pay attention to those things and nurture those things and continue to grow uh, to be more and more the community that God calls us to be. As we navigate this next transition, as we are invited to think about uh, COVID in increasingly as an endemic uh, that we will live with for a while and navigate public spaces together, uh, we want to alert you to two major changes that you'll notice at church this Sunday. Uh, our COVID protocols have been updated with the input of our COVID-19 management team and with the full support and endorsement of your vestry. Uh, things like um, the food pantry basket we're hoping to bring back, uh, other things that we uh, haven't brought back yet like coffee hour, uh, we're hoping to be able to begin some conversations about that um, and how we increasingly bring back those things that we have had to let go of due to uh, safety protocols over the last two years. Two main changes that you will notice this Sunday. The first is that we will bring back uh, the common cup during communion. So we will continue to receive communion as we've been uh, in two stations. And then after you receive the host, you can step to the side and either share uh, in drinking from the common cup or you can stand there with your hands crossed across your chest and hear the words of administration and participate in that way. Or you can simply receive the bread and walk by uh, the common cup station. Uh, that is following the guidelines of our diocese uh, and permissions that the church has set out uh, that date back to April 1st, but that we wanted to wait until we were through Holy Week and Easter to implement. A reminder that in the Episcopal Church, we believe that receiving in one kind, that is the bread, is receiving in both. So no one is forced to receive uh, the wine, of course, but you are invited as you feel comfortable and safe doing so to receive from the common cup. We won't be inviting folks to intinct, that is to dip your wafer uh, in the chalice, uh, but you are welcome to either drink from the common cup or again to cross your arms across your chest and hear the words and participate in that way. The other major change you will notice is that this Sunday begins our time at St. Paul's of becoming what we're calling a mask-friendly congregation. So by being mask friendly, what we mean to say that by that is that we want to be as intentional in our support of every person's individual uh, decision about how to keep themselves safe 
uh, as we are about any other way that we are welcoming and inviting as a community at St. Paul's. If you are making the decision to continue to wear a mask, uh, we support you and we want you to know that you are welcome and invited. Uh, if you are choosing not to wear a mask in the sanctuary while you were there, you are equally welcome and invited. And this time will bring out in us, uh, I think, what makes us the community that we are, that we will learn and grow. Uh, extending grace and love and support to one another, even as we may differ in our approaches to this transition. As an experiment, we are reserving the far left side of the congregation for folks who might want to sit next to other people who are still masked uh, for the time being as a way of trying to avoid having to uh, navigate um, uncomfortable conversations or moving uh, seats during the course of worship. So for uh, for the time being, we're going to see if that meets a need in the community to have the far left hand, hand side of the section be for folks who want to wear masks and who want to sit with others uh, who are wearing masks. We will encourage uh, mutual love and support, as I said, and we will continue to be curious uh, with one another about how this feels and uh, what it brings up for us, what we're missing, what we're hoping for, uh, maybe what we thought would be okay and we're feeling differently. And uh, we want to make sure that that communication is open and honest and able to be had. To that effort, uh, both after the eight o'clock service at nine o'clock in the Great Hall, and then after the 10 o'clock service at about 1130 in the sanctuary, we're going to hold two listening sessions, uh, which is just time to talk about what it feels like to be at this point um, in the COVID pandemic endemic. Uh, what is it bringing up for folks? How might it look to be St. Paul's in this time? Uh, how will we be as welcoming uh, in this time regarding masks and how people are able uh, to choose to participate in our community as we are about anything else and all the other ways that we are welcoming and inviting at St. Paul's. So please do join us if you're able to, uh, both at nine o'clock uh, in the Great Hall and then after the 10 o'clock service again in the sanctuary. Just a quick reminder that this Sunday is Godspell Sunday. Um, unfortunately, due to copyright and licensing requirements, we are unable to stream uh, our services this Sunday, but we will resume uh, streaming a week from Sunday. And we pray that those of you who are unable to be with us uh, in person will be with us in spirit. Uh, and if you need help finding a, a congregation uh, to participate in streaming, please do let me know. Um, you can always, uh, I know Trinity in Copley Square streams each Sunday, as do many parishes in the diocese, as does the National Cathedral. I do hope you're able to be with us in person if that works for you for this continued celebration of Easter time. As always, we invite you to be in touch with me or one of your wardens or any member of the vestry to voice your concerns or your support or your questions. Uh, we want to make sure that all your questions and ideas and longings uh, for our community uh, can be spoken and brought, uh, brought forth. That's what makes us the community that God calls us to be. I ask you to hold St. Paul's in your prayers and our leadership and our community as we continue to grow and longing into being the community that God needs us to be in this world at this time. Remember to be good to yourself. Be good to one another. Remember that God loves you abundantly, and so do we. Take care and God bless.